This November, Gareth Malone is coming back to Cambridge and this time he has got a very personal story to share with us. Not only that, but apparently we're going to be getting involved. His new tour is called Sing Along a Gareth, My Life Through Song and I spoke to him a little earlier. Gareth, welcome to the afternoon show. Now, if I understand this correctly, you're asking us to sing. I know it's your job to train people to be able to sing, but this feels like a big task when it's theatres. How is it going to work? Um, well, this is my third time of doing it, so I definitely know it works. Uh, Sing Along the Gareth uh, is a very simple idea. You turn up at the theatre, you can see the lyrics on the screen in large friendly letters i walk on with a band um i play bass i play guitar got a keyboard player drummer we've got um two backing vocalists as well and we have a, a live choir in every venue a local choir and we just do songs that you definitely know uh, absolute bangers from elton john to um uh, we're going all the way through to Beyonce. We've got uh, Dusty Springfield in there. We've just got lots and lots of songs that you, as soon as you hear the introduction, you'll you'll know them. And uh, and it's, I mean, honestly, I, from the moment I walk out um, in every venue, there's a thousand people all singing at me. It's just absolutely amazing. Really fun, uncomplicated night. What's fabulous about this is I've now realised that there's low expectation on theatre goes if we're not great singers. So actually, between you oh, and your choir and a big theatre full of people, um, how did the idea of telling your story through song come about? Because it's so kind of obvious and yet probably quite complicated because I think of the range of music that would tell my life if I was to do Desert Island Discs yeah. and I'm not in the musical world. You must just be rammed full of tracks that you've had to, been desperate to, to have in and then had to say farewell to. I mean, the long list is about 50 songs. I've, I've just tried to choose fun moments where perhaps I have a supporting photograph that will <laughs> tell the audience what going on um i've also got you know it's not entirely serious some of it's a bit tongue in cheek and i'm going to do um vida loca by ricky martin because that's a song that i did on um uh, i danced to when i was a cactus on uh, the masked dancer so you know, there's a lot of a lot of silliness a lot of fun um we're doing take on me by our heart because that was the song that i remember dancing to a girl with very shabbily when i was about 11 or 10 or something like that there's just little moments that obviously other people will connect to those songs some of them are more emotional uh we're going to do, do uh, just to try and kind of get under people's skin i guess and get them move them and and get them enervated and excited i wanted a um I wanted this kind of central narrative to run through the show because otherwise you're just doing random songs the little kind of you know, a little bit of two, like a radio two link, if you like. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wanted to just give it a kind of a, a spine. So I thought, well, I'll just sort of tell tell the story of the last forty nine years. I'll be forty nine this year, so I'm gonna tell that tell that story in in my own way. So may I have the absolute audacity to give you some advice? And I'll say this because I saw something very sim very similar with the legendary, iconic Tim Rice a few weeks ago. It was extraordinary. Oh. And what I loved about his life in his music, as in it's obviously the music that he's created, was even though he must have heard Don't Cry For Me Argentina 9,873 times, you can still see him closing his eyes and swaying along like it still means something to him. But what was hilarious was when I interviewed him about about his um, theatre evening was that he said, well, he had, you know, he had his choir and he had his singers and he had his band, but he never really knew which order he was going to tell the stories in or which anecdote he was going to yeah. go down. Yeah. So I feel like for the sake of the timings of the theatre and for your sanity and the sanity of your choirs, do you have bullet points in front of you so you can keep on track oh, for the evening? <laughs> I could not be more different. I, I tie this thing down with hoops. It is absolutely... OK, so obviously it's different in every venue. The exact words, the way in which you tell things, people heckle, we write a song and there's a bit of, you know, and that's very much audience interaction. And you get the, the odd funny thing happens. But pretty much the structure of the show is uh, immutable. It will not change unless we, you know, we might swap one or two songs around if it's not working. But really, we'd only do that in the, the first 
two, first two shows. And then we're, then it's about, for me, it's about making that better and better and better over the course of it. And also, um, because I've got the, uh, I have a big sort of PowerPoint on the screen behind with photos and story, you know, the photos reflect the stories and, and, um, and the lyrics, it, we can't, I can't be moving that around. My poor tech guy would have a, a hernia, I think, if that happened. Um, before I let you go, I know you've got choirs at each of the venues. Who's going to be joining you, joining you for your Cambridge um, event on the 29th of November? Well, I, um, I'm having had lots of different choirs, which turned into a, a, a just a logistical nightmare. <laughs> I've gone with a, a group called Sing Space, and what's great about them is they're uh, run by a fantastic um, lady called Rachel Lines, and she is an ex-music theatre performer. So they've all got it's got that kind of music theatre bent to it, and we're going to be doing a medley of songs from Les Mis. And we're doing Circle of Life by Elton John from The Lion King, uh, because you know that kind of works with the theme of the show. And we're doing The Greatest Showman, A Million Dreams, because uh, you know that's pretty much sums me up. I cannot wait. I went to see Frozen a couple of weeks ago, and at the beginning of the performance, they say, please don't sing along. And I was like, guys, come on, know your audience, it's Frozen. Uh, so that I'll be there on not. the front row. <laughs> yeah, I know. People I, mean, what the, I mean, I just, come on. <laughs> well, you are more than welcome to come, and you're more than welcome to sing along. And I have to say that Cambridge uh, Film Exchange is just one of my absolute favourites. I just... I, lo- I love being in that room. It's great. And we've done, this will be the third time, third year in a row in that venue, and just every time it just gets better and better. Uh, well, we're going to be talking to a local choir. They've been on before. They'll be coming on again soon. They're a choir of widows, and they're getting their mojo back oh. after losing partners by a, by joining this choir. Uh, so I might have to organise oh, a gosh. tour bus to come and see you all, um, because maybe when you come yeah, back for the fourth time, way. they can be your choir, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gareth, thank you so uh, much for taking time to chat to us. Uh, we'll be on the front row, probably the entire team, uh, because myself and Anna love a musical. Uh, so we'll see you Friday oh, the 29th. Come and say hello. I will. Friday the 29th of November, Cambridge Corn Exchange. Gareth, thank you so much for joining us on the afternoon show.